Dev? I'm Rufina Bazlova. Um, we are both from Belarus. Woo woo, Belarus in the house. <laughs> Sorry, had to. I never get to do that. <laughs> um, who, who knows where Belarus is? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, great. <laughs> um, so Rufina is a political artist who has continued to live in Belarus for a very long time. I immigrated from there as a child. I live here in Chicago. And today we're going to talk about um, doing international solidarity work while living in the diaspora. So I'm going to start with a question for you. Um, if you could talk a little bit about the work that you do um, and how your medium um, connects to the political activations that you do. Yeah. Um, actually, my main tool I work with is uh, traditional Belarusian embroidery, but uh, through this medium I just depict and I work with the political topics, political issues. And uh, currently my work is uh, about political prisoners in Belarus, because there are more than 1,500 directly like right now in the moment in prisons. And um, uh, the work was developed uh, after the first series where I used ornament to tell uh, the stories uh, of uh, Belarusian protests in 2020. And uh, this project is, uh, you see the sample here, uh, the project about political prisoners uh, is named Framed in Belarus. And um, uh, this is, uh, it's very important to say that this is the uh, um, uh, collective project. Uh, we uh, the the core is that I create the patterns, like I study the stories and I create the pattern uh, in this uh, traditional white red colors. And um, then I invite a lot of people from like everyone can join the project to stitch one or more stories of political prisoners. And then we collect back all the works and. Um, uh, try to exhibit them working like now we're working on a big archive on uh, uh, um, like web page and um, <laughs> sorry um, yeah for the moment we already have 400 pieces collected from people from uh, like around to 20 countries so and here is the sample how their pattern look like uh, uh, in the middle, there is the hero. If I know a uh, heroine, uh, I, if I know something about the person, uh, I add some uh, details there. Also, there is the name and the surname of the political prisoner. And uh, above, there is the name of the case. And um, um, below, it's actually the, the short illustration of what happened to the person. Um, and one very important thing that uh, in the corner, there is a signature of a person who uh, stitch the work. I think we can show the second slide also. Uh, yeah, and also like we work, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very uh, important thing for like uh, in the project so people can work uh, together in groups. I mean, we also organize uh, workshops where people can meet and share their uh, feelings and or, um, thoughts and uh, yes and also it's possible to work alone especially it is very important for people in Belarus uh, where it's just dangerous to to gather together <laughs> so uh, and how it works um, I think we can go back to the first slide uh, we also uh, ask people to share their like in general I would say the project is about um, stories, not only about stories of political prisoners, but also about stories of people who join the project. Uh, usually they do it because they want to show solidarity, because uh, they're empathize with these people struggling in, uh, uh, in prisons. And uh, we ask these participants to share their thoughts and feelings, and actually from uh, these uh, feedbacks we learned a lot, so the project somehow uh, have uh, proposed um, an alternative physical uh, um, psychological support because stitching process is very slow and meditative somehow, and uh, you have a lot of time to um, to think about the situation to think um, about like 
connections, or like relations to with you and your country, and also what uh, like comparing uh, what is happening in Belarus. And actually, for Belarusians, it is uh, somehow uh, an instrument to um, uh, to work with. Uh, um, um, with their struggle and feeling like united uh, with people um, in general, like with other Belarusians in all, among all the world, and also with uh, uh, like other people. Uh, so, um, and for for people from uh, uh, from other countries, it's also uh, a kind of um, instrument of how to know what is going on there. So it has also an educative effect. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, something that just uh, struck out to me when you were talking is the fact that embroidery is such a meditative process. And um, if I understand correctly, a lot of your work has been shared through social media. So thinking about that kind of like very fast um, way that folks consume and then the very slow process of actually embroidery. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in that kind of dichotomy and how in some ways maybe this wouldn't have been possible in another time. And also what you mentioned around the fact that it's either illegal or very dangerous to actually protest actively physically in Belarus. Um, and then this being a way that folks can participate in solidarity struggles in a way that is decentralized and distributed. So yeah, if you wanna um, just talk a little bit about how um, folks in Belarus are responding to this global participation and what you've heard about the impact of it. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, about like how the information is spread in media, so it's very fast, like when there were protests in 2020, I actually had my Instagram account where I just in this technique, because it's like traditional and it's very recognizable and somehow I work with cultural codes, so everyone uh, like from Belarus or from our region just can see the work and understand uh, like th this code speaks like, okay, this is Belarusian, I, I know it, and also like, uh, coding in in this traditional style, uh, the contemporary, like the modern situations and events uh, were also like super recognizable for for people, and uh, that's how it became very popular through uh, social media. So people just share it. And another thing is about the technique of uh, embroidery and stitching the pattern. It is very um, soft and uh, somehow. Um, when like we just have plenty of photos and videos like with all the violence and blood and sometimes for people it's very hard to accept uh, like to consume these uh, pictures uh, the technique of uh, like this soft and pretty technique uh, telling these stories were like more acceptable so um, it also helped to, to spread the information so people just sh share it Mm. Um, yes, and also uh, there, as I said, there are a lot of stories uh, of uh, people who uh, participate in the project. Some, so, somehow, they, this is very important for them to to find, for example, connections. Um, like we had different stories. One, a woman from Canada, she just. Uh, hmm, maybe I'll ask you later. How do you feel? Uh, she, she originally she was from Belarus, and uh, but she cannot uh, visit her grandmother because of COVID and because of all the situations that happened afterwards. Uh, but she, through the project and through the stitching, she found this connection with her roots. So, how did you feel? Because you saw it also like earlier. Yeah, so I, I've actually um, found out about your work pretty recently. I wish I had known about it in 2020 because I was here watching the protests unfold while at the same time we were having our own you know, global movement for black lives and I was also doing a project archiving the uprisings here at the same time. Um, and I feel like there, that's a common thread between our work and actually if you could move down to, to two more slides, yeah, that one. Um, Prior to us meeting and knowing about each other's work, I was um, and still am part of a queer post-Soviet Jewish artist collective named um, Krivoy Collective. 
and we were creating similar work, kind of like reclaiming our um, traditional cultural practices. Um, these scarves read abolition at the mitzvah, a free Palestine at the mitzvah, queer at the mitzvah, and repatriation at the mitzvah. And a, a mitzvah or a mitzvah is um, the Jewish term for a good deed. So reclaiming these concepts that for a lot of us, we have been um, called traitors for, or we have been shamed about in our own families. So these words of like, bridat il pazor, like always feeling like somehow we are betraying our people by actually participating in solidarity with the oppressed peoples of the world. Um, and I, I love for in your work the fact that you created a pattern that then becomes accessible to so many folks. And I. I, I, I'm really inspired by that and, and thinking about how um, to make this work more decentralized and more um, in, create an invitation for others to participate. If you could go to the next slide. So the piece that um, I've been working on since 2020, living our parallel lives not knowing each other, um, is called What Time Is It? And it is inspired by um, Grace Lee Boggs and Jimmy Boggs, who were uh, black power organizers in Detroit, and would ask this question, what time is it on the clock of the world? So in early 2020, um, when the pandemic first began and um, a lot of folks were on lockdown, I started reaching out to um, folks that I really admire. Some of those folks are in this room right now, folks like Tempest, folks like Amar, folks like Halesh, um, and asking them this question and having them sit for a portrait over Zoom. And um, actually the show is up right now at the Chicago Art Department and we're having um, a conversation this Saturday that I wanna invite folks to that Halesh is uh, facilitating, but just thinking about this idea of um, solidarity and how do we bring together multiple perspectives from multiple lived identities and also to Tempest Project thinking about living archives and how do we take back the power of our own narratives from institutions. Can we do a time check? Two minutes. Um, any other questions? <laughs> Maybe I just like uh, want, want to say this for, for my project and I think also for yours it's like very important the careness. So uh, actually it's spreading not only solidarity but like uh, that people care and uh, like also care about healthcare, about uh, mm, uh, mental care and care about other people not being like just selfish and yeah, having hope. Yeah, I think that piece around um, mutual aid and community care is something that's like a connective tissue um, during the ongoing pandemic. <laughs> um, yeah, I think something, a theme that's come up a couple times today is um, the importance of relationships and interdependence. Um, and I think those are ways that we are able to kind of push back on these harmful systems. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, in our one minute left, I want to open up to the audience. I feel like it's always just the people up here. Does anyone have a question for us? Can I ask you a basic question? Yes. It's called Krivoy Collective, which means Krivoy is like crooked, and it refers to our, our, our noses and our sexuality. <laughs> Um, any other questions? Audience? Breaking the fourth wall? Yes.
Just the microphone. Yes, I, I did, but for streaming, I think. Uh, if uh, anyone here wants to join your embroidery project, what should we do? Go to framedinbelarus.net, register Google form, and as soon as I have new patterns, we will contact you. <laughs>